Hello everybody and welcome to another week of Camping Corner. We have no idea what episode this is. What do we say? 25, 24 and a half? 24.337. Okay, that's good enough for me because we weren't here last week. Were we, Dan? No, we weren't here last week. <laughs> if you have a complaint about that, you can contact our executive director. It was all his fault. But we have a new member of the Behind Camera cast this week. We do. We have Greer, who would she be our key? Would she be the key grip? What would she be? Assistant camera operator? I don't know because I feel like we just changed Dan's title. Like we called him executive producer, but now executive director. So everybody just gets a title. <laughs> and all in all, Mallory and I are just the talent. That's it. No more, all no that less. Needs to be said. Just the talent. As long as we're using the word talent in a very loose form of the word. <laughs> Mostly for Tony. Correct. <laughs> I, have, I have no no comment. <laughs> no comment. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we realistically we did miss miss you guys last yes. week. Uh, we apologize. We're making fun of Dan, but realistically we went live with a new website for the dealership last week, yep. and Dan was knee deep and all that stuff, and there just wasn't enough time to get everything, you know, put in. So. He did have his hands full. We'll he give did. him that. Those pretty modeling hands. <laughs> he did. Full. Right before that, I had called him and said, hey, I think our website crashed. And he goes, no, I think we're oh, we're right in the middle of it switching over. And, like, the new site went live, like, in the middle of the day. Yeah. So the old site went down, and it was it was a cluster. A debacle. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. What's the buzz? What's the buzz? What is this? Our lot? Is this photo? Did you... This first funny pick. Is that our our lot? That is our lot. And that is a tiny camper. Is it a tiny toy camper? Like uh, one of those photo the way you angle the camera? It is. I love it. It's really cute, right? It yeah. is very cute. It, it only took Dan 11 takes to get the perfect picture. And I said no matter how big or small, it's about the adventure. Yes. That's right. That is right. So then we also had some fan submitted pictures here, which they definitely have got quite the setup. I love it. It actually well, looks very organized. That's from Happy Birthday America. Yeah. We need more. Like, I've been getting a few here lately, but yeah. definitely call out to your fan base to send some more because I love sharing them. I pretty yeah. much share every one, and especially be sure to tag us so I can share it. Yeah, absolutely. Send us some of those uh uh, you know, let us know how you celebrated uh, the 4th of July. And all the campgrounds are full, so we know y'all are out there camping. Send us your pictures. Yes. I didn't take any pictures at all. I wouldn't of care. <laughs> I just didn't even take any pictures. I was, I was, uh, I was busy. Hey, you got, no, we're not done. We got the back side of the page. Oh, yeah. So, I did this, the funny, the name generator for camping. Yes. I did this, I'm not real, okay, this is kind of fitting that I'm not happy with my name when it's actually a cranky cruiser. I, that's right, I'm the crazy cruiser. That fits you. Woo! <laughs> I don't feel like I'm a cranky person. I don't know. Cranky cruiser. Well, I am birthy cranky pants. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Most certainly. Greer, what are you? She yeah. is drenched tent master, which I don't think is right, because how are you drenched if you're a master of tenting? Yeah, that's kind of an, like an oxymoron, right? Right. Like it just doesn't... We call those Tonys. <laughs> call, call me what? <laughs> I was very yes. to say... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's the easiest way to deflect it, just don't... No. I was like, man, we've caught Tony speechless twice already this episode. So, hey, uh, Dan, everybody will most certainly get a kick out of this because uh, there's no there's no secret. We love camping. Mm -hmm. So we bought new furniture for the house, but it doesn't get delivered until the 28th of this month. So today's the 17th. But my wife gave our old living room furniture away to a young friend of ours for their first place. So last night I'm watching uh, my 
two episodes of Yellowstone uh, that I love to watch. And we're sitting in zero gravity lawn chairs in our <laughs> living room. <laughs> so I said, hey, you know what? We're starting a new fad because you can take the furniture outside. You know, if you want to sit down on the front porch, just grab the furniture, take it outside. It's a minim- minimalist approach. So it's like a very versatile furniture. I like it. Yeah. The dogs are trying to figure out, though, where, the, where are they supposed to be laying because they just, it's not happening. <laughs> Anyway. So time for the poll. Poll. What, poll. Polls what should, are, would you are choose? Open. A, beach camping, or B, mountain camping? I'm beach all the way. Uh, I'm mountain. See, that's no surprise there for me yeah. that he's mountain. Most people said A and B, why I have to choose, which I agree. I agree. Like, like Sarah and I will go to the beach with our camper one year, and then the next year we'll go, like, a mountain vacation. Or yeah. So why not do them all? I mean, they're both beautiful, both beautiful sceneries. Yeah, I, I, I think the beach is, you know, I think it's beautiful. I'm not getting in the water, you know. I'm just not a beach. That's just not my thing, you know. It's what, just. Did you see what Dan did to you in the next poll? Yeah, I, and I had, Dan had an argument with my lovely wife. Oh, and then no. he then he pulled the employees and their family members are not eligible. <laughs> I mean that's a legit argument. She can't vote. She's not eligible, right. and she's one hundred percent biased. And then she pointed <laughs> then she pointed out the fact of it's not like I'm I get to win anything anyway, so I can vote. Now, what I was surprised with the Ford and the Chevy. I probably should have did a better job with it. because There should have been people, C, because there were a whole lot of people that were there adding. There were a lot of Dodge, yes. which those don't count to me. I mean, they can be <laughs> Dodgers. <laughs> but a lot of people assumed that I meant like 1500s, and I was just talking Ford versus Chevy in general. In general, right. you weren't like a specific. Right. Now, the Chevys come out of the gate pretty strong, but the Fords are coming back with a vengeance right now. So we're going to have to give this till next week. Because people are still voting to really give it a fair chance. I would say that your vote high is winning as of now, but the Ford people it's, are... Here's the problem. Your Chevy people are at home right now, not towing. My Ford people are all driving to the campground right now, so we got to wait on them to vote. Uh, I would argue that point that says the heartbeat of America is winning because everybody else... Is, do, is working on the fix or repair daily or found on road dead. So they're sitting at the side of the road trying to figure out, I think it's overheated. It's got a broken head gasket. <laughs> now, I own a Ford, and I do not sound like that. <laughs> but yours doesn't have a broken head gasket. However, if you called me and told me you were broke down on the side of the road, I guarantee that's exactly what you would sound like. I think I got a broken <laughs> head gasket. So we'll see what happens next week. Ford people, don't let me down. <laughs> it's the heartbeat of America, baby. Oh my goodness, you two. It's never even when you even when they complete this poll for you guys, it doesn't matter. No. This is gonna keep going forever for both of you. Yes. Well, I, so the heartbeat of America has one of the greatest singers ever for what a decade. That was the that was the the sound of the heartbeat beat of America, Bob Seger, and Ford has a washed up comedian that nobody really thinks funny anyway in Dennis Leary. See, Ford doesn't need to waste their money on talent to try to sell their product. They spend their money on research and development and awesomeness. Really, really. Moving okay, on. break it up, guys. Around the web, guys. Around the web. Okay. Is this on our website or what? No, so Greer did a lovely job and she found a website that listed the top states to camp. So it actually had more, but we just picked the top five. Okay. I am actually, okay, so I'm not too shocked. So number one is Colorado, two is Missouri, three is Montana, four, New Mexico, and five, New York. Which number five kind of shocks me. I mean, I know New York isn't all New York City. Like, they've got beautiful countryside. But I wouldn't have thought that it'd be up there in the list. So. Yeah, I, I have no no interest in going to New York of any sort. But is it, doesn't New York have part of the Adirondacks? Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. in the Catskill Mountains. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there is some pretty mountainous stuff up there, but I think that's, like, upper New York it state. It is. But I think that's, the, like, where I always do, when you hear New York, you automatically think New York City. You automatically think congested areas. You don't want to take your fifth wheel to New York, New York? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even want to take my regular vehicle and drive through there, let alone... I don't even want to have a layover at the airport (laughs) in New York City. So, yeah, there's a good list. Um, Definitely not... I'm not shocked by, like, Colorado or Montana. So which one of those would you want to go to first, Tony? So I have to admit, since I've gotten addicted to watching Yellowstone with Kevin Costner, I've never really spent a whole... Because I'm not a snow skier... So, and I know, you know, Utah and Montana and, and, you know, those are our huge, you know, skiing destinations and so on like that. But after watching the, some of the scenery around Montana, I catch myself going, you know, that's, that's, that's going to have to be on the list. I, I, it, it, it looks absolutely just stunningly beautiful. So I was out there not camping, went on a family vacation when I was a kid and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say Colorado or Montana for me, for sure. I, I, I could do Colorado. Uh, Missouri, been there, done that. That's, you know. Yeah. So, uh, we looking around, we found some apps that are great to use because, of course, everything in today's day and age, there's an app for it. Right. Um, so, some of those that those apps that will help you when you're traveling and moving around, uh, RV Life Navigation. Uh, the RV GPS and campground locator, recreation.gov navigation. Ooh, you can compare campgrounds with that one. Find national parks, forests, and other recreational sites. You can search thousands of locations. Like how we both did that. Like we both had the same. Thousands. We've been doing the show together for too long. So, are there any apps that any of our our yeah. watchers, our our fans, use when they're when they're doing those things? Not just, and, and I guess it doesn't just have to be about traveling. I mean, are there apps that you use for recipes or? Yeah. Picking out your next. Just anything to GM make. pickup truck. I mean, do you do you shop for that online? <laughs> Maybe a good uh. place to find parts for broke down Ford pickup trucks. Oh my goodness. All right, so now we've got Gadget Corner, and this week we actually do have a gadget. Cool gadget. It's an ice maker, but where is it? It's right. Oh, there it is. Did you know that this fantastic piece of equipment, Necessities for the Campground, produces up to 26 pounds of ice in a 24-hour period? That's crazy. And if you let it sit outside and the ice melts, it'll recycle it. Nice. So 26 pounds of ice in 24 hours is good for about 40 drinks. It's a lot of margaritas you can make. How oh, did you, it, where, where did that math come from? How did you do? What, what math did you use for that? Because I only use like one or two ice cubes per drink. <laughs> I was just curious on what you use for your math. That's all. I was. Yeah, I, you, know, <laughs> you know, I don't know how many ice cubes are in a in a pound, but you know. What if you were making frozen drinks? Then it's good. It, well. At 26 pounds, it's good for one giant Mexican margarita from the Mexican restaurant in like the fishbowl. It's about 26 it's a pounds. Big, ice. Like 60 ounce of margarita. Thank you. You know, you could probably just make the margarita. Pour it. Right, some, like right inside get there. Get some straws. Do it. Done. Then when it recycles it, do you get margarita ice? Ooh. I see. I'm just. So thinking. could you do this? Could you put, could you insert adult beverage and let it make ice cubes out of said adult beverage? I'd be willing to try it. I'm just saying. We need to see if anyone has one and see if they can tell us if you can or not. That is a great question. We need answers. (laughs) America, we need answers. That or we just steal that one and take it to the campground. We can do that too. So, you ready for what the what? What the what? (laughs) Who do you? What the what? But this first picture, though, I think you could say, what the watermelon? What the? Oh, that is a watermelon. Yeah. (laughs) 
the detail, the level of detail painted to make this look like a watermelon is a little impressive. So I wonder if the inside is that pinkish red. Yeah, do like you have all... like the red with like the black seeds all yeah. throughout? That's it's pretty creative though. It is, because I see why they did it. I mean, being that shape, the camper. That shape, the camper. Being that shape and makes sense. Yeah. Super cool. I actually kind of like I, it. I would have like a, a tenth of it done, and then I would be, oh, I'm overdoing this. Or this is going to take That is obviously long. a very artistic person. Yes. Speaking of artistic, this is very like techno. That to me looks like if Apple decided to get into the camping industry. They, right. That's why I was like trying to think like a high tech. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to sell it and upgrade every year to the newest <laughs> Apple Camper, <laughs> Apple Camper 12, right. Apple Camper 13, and they come out with a special plug that you have to buy from them right. in order to plug it in to charge it at the camper. Right. Yep. I and see. the only thing they change on it is like one little minute thing, and they make it the greatest thing. It's the greatest one ever. I mean, That's my Mike Tyson. Look at the awning. It looks like a CD player. Like, you know, like... <laughs> It does look like it looks like a, a a ROM tray or a CD tray. Well, the rest of the camper kind of looks like a speaker. It does, with with it those really little bluevered things over there. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the Future made a camper. That's a Tesla truck. The new Tesla truck is coming out. Oh, okay. So I I couldn't tell if this was like some kind of artist rendition of what I Tesla camper would look like, right? Or if this is a real thing, I think it's fake, mm -hmm. but I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, it's pretty cool. I'd be, I mean, on all of these, I'm not gonna lie, I'm always curious to know what the inside of these things look like. You know what it, I mean? My problem with it, this looks for people in my age group. Really old. Got it. This is like remember this remember Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. This is even the the Cybertruck itself. I mean, it looks like it looks like something from the late seventies, early eighties sci-fi. Yeah. What will be really interesting though is once more of these electric trucks come out, because they're saying the tow capacity on these things are like thirty and forty thousand pounds. Yeah, and that their travel distance is really great. And then Tesla's done like this amazing job of putting these rapid chargers basically blanketing the country. So it'll be really interesting to see if we don't eventually start seeing our Fords and our Chevys right. less and more electric trucks. Right. Because I know, I know Ford's coming out with one. I do know Chevy's coming out with one. And then, of course, Tesla has one. Well, and, and the best, I, and I haven't seen anything on the, on, the GM, you know, on the GM truck or the Ford other than some stuff that they're working on it. However, Tes, uh, Tesla did, did some really cool things, you know, obviously, with the Tesla automobile and when he made $6 billion in one day last week. So he's doing a lot of things right. But as a truck guy who loves trucks, the Nikola Badger looks like a truck and that is that that yes that thing is awesome mm. yes awesome. i agree looks like a truck everything about it says that it's a truck a right. real real truck not some hey we built this in silicon valley and it's a truck could you imagine <laughs> though if they come out with the capabilities for it to do auto driving while you're pulling your camper i mean that would take a lot of trust yeah my friend has a tesla and when i ride with him I'm still nervous. Like I'm looking I'm all like, around, oh, yeah. and he's turned in the back seat, grabbing something and everything else, and he drives it every day to work, no problem. But I'm still leery. Yeah. But I mean, it would be really interesting to put, you know, a fifteen thousand pound fifth wheel behind it and be like, all right, we're headed to California, autopilot, let's go. Yeah, I would still, I'd still have some major trust issues there. Super sketchy. We've shown this one before. But I brought it back because Greer actually put together this week's show, which I think she did a great job. She did. Um, and she liked it, so I thought it was just worthy of noting again. How freaking cool is that one? And I feel like I failed to notice. Did we fail to notice the Betty Boop sticker on the front? 
Um, I, I remember the so I like the Betty Boop sticker. I also like the hazard the the hazardous waste yes uh, sticker at the back. But yeah. that, that 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 is super cool. And I have to admit, I would I would carry a cocktail to those people immediately upon entering the campground. Oh yeah, these are people you want to know. Like yeah, you have it's to, just you I have gotta to know them. the story yeah. about this thing. But it, I agree. it's super cool. <laughs> Did they turn a golf cart into a camper? I think so. I think that's what this is. I like the, the little awning is precious. The little picnic table, the little is that lawn like chair. The, that looks like a little Fisher Price picnic table. That it's like the, the and the campsite number is 109 and a half. <laughs> Do you know how cool you would be though if you drove this around a campground? Oh like yeah. If this was your golf cart at a campground. You would be the hit of the campground. Oh yeah, hands down. Yep. I'd be drink. Be, see, we'd be bringing a drink to these people too. This, I mean, I feel like they set this up for their kids, so maybe not. And anybody who's been shopping for a golf cart or has bought a golf cart in the last couple of years for the campground, this is a ten thousand dollar camper. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you literally could, you could put a for sale sign on that in the campground and put 10 grand on it and it would be gone in 20 minutes. You could buy an actual camper cheaper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's cute. I like it. No, I it is It is super cool. I like super, it. Super, super cute. Part of me sits there and wonders, would my wife let me do that? Would she let me build that on my no, golf cart? No, I don't think Stacy would let you do it. Derek wouldn't let me do it. However... Maybe I build one and then go, ta-da! <laughs> it's always better to ask for forgiveness than it is permission. <laughs> Dan wants to see this go down. I can tell by... I was just trying to figure out how you were going to sneak off and build this. Like, Without I'm just knowing. going to the garage for a couple of hours tonight. <laughs> Don't come out! Don't come out! Stacy never goes into the garage. And you're bringing all this sheet metal home... <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the banging you hear out here. Yes. <laughs> that yeah. is super cool, though. I have got to admit, I, I, I love that it's thing. It's adorable. I like it. Hmm. <laughs> it's time. Who For sold Tony's it better? Favorite segment. You both got hosed the last we week. We did. We did. So your whole conspiracy theory just went out the window Blew last week. out the week. water. Out the water. So, Greer being new, Greer, which one, Tony or Mallory, gets to pick first? Ladies first. Okay. So, all right. So, Mallory, you get number one or number two. Number one is on the reverse side. Number two is obviously second page. I'm going to choose number one. So, flip your page over quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. This, the roof, I mean, people, you've got a full metal roof on this thing. That's protection right there. The sound when it rains is going to be phenomenal. This, I'm pretty sure, is an actual mobile home on the back of the truck. So talk about space. You've got space in this thing. I'm sure it's got a fully working residential fridge an oven in it too fully working I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's fully working <laughs> these nice solid steps <laughs> at the front those are fantastic but this is like a double wide for a travel trailer everybody wants one large space with working appliances <laughs> <laughs> the truck doesn't work. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But the appliances, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and that's a Chevrolet truck, just so you know. I don't, yeah, I don't know if we can classify this as a motor home. Well, it's a home and it's got a motor in the front. It does have a motor in the front. Presumably. Presumably. <laughs> Not sure how you would drive it. Um, but yeah, the. I think you have double protection roof here. They put a roof on top of the roof. Double protection. <laughs> All right, Mr. Tony, you get number 
Two. Oh. 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 Well, would you look at that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I like the faux tire in the front. So the, uh, it's got air conditioning for your camping comfort. It's beautiful. I love the portal window in the entry door. Allows you to see who's coming to visit the Shea Palace. The Shea Palace. It's, so I don't know if the shovels and the rakes are so you can bury it so you're not embarrassed by it or... You know, maybe they might have a beautiful garden. I don't know. The the, the one might be propped up holding the sides <laughs> up. But uh, it's got a, that's one heck of a sprinkler or hose reel laying back there. But it looks like it's aluminum, super cool. It's got a great, you know, got a great feel to it. Got some spotlights up there on the front. Can't have anybody up, you know, sneaking up on your, in the middle of the night. Up, <laughs> try to steal spotlight. something. Stay away from my lawn equipment. Don't take one of my shovels. That's Cletus. He's coming to get one of them. I told him he couldn't borrow it. But, uh, yeah. I also appreciate how everything is basically dirt and mud leading up to it, but then they have the one step right in front of the door so you don't track the mud in. I'm pretty sure the shovels are to dig it out because of how far down the tire is. So all in all, maybe the shovels... Got a beautiful garden, maybe doing something like that. The only thing that's really throwing me off on this, or what's throwing me off more than anything, is the door is on the wrong side. Yeah. Maybe they re-engineered where the door <laughs> the door is. Anyway. Yeah. I just know I'm not camping in it because... I am up to date on my tetanus shots, but I'm still not camping in that thing. I think both of us would need to be for either one of these. Yep, you betcha. <laughs> I think that's it. I think we're done. Yes, another episode in the books. Till next week, as long as our writers are able to write a show. We have to say Greer did this one, and she did a fantastic job. Yep, except for the correlation of the coalition <laughs> of printing everything on the front and back. See, Greer, I tried. I don't... I'm too short to reach my papers. Anyway, hey guys, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye, guys.